So, how did Paul destroy Jesus' religion? So-called Saint Paul had been the bitterest enemy of Jesus throughout the life of Jesus according to Encyclopedia Britannica. After Jesus temporarily left this world his enmity to Jesus continued and also against his true followers and his message, only it took a more clever, more shrewd turn. To kill Jesus' teachings and message through inventing Jesus' worship. Idea of Son of God was already present regarding Prophet Uzair among a group of Jews. He took that concept and pasted on Jesus. Paul's original name was Saul. He was a Greek Jew rabbi. He persecuted and even killed the Jews who began believing in Jesus. He made them expelled from synagogues. The closest despises like Street Barnabas and James strongly rejected Paul's claims of divinity of Jesus and also his fabrication of original sin and Jesus being died for our sins. The people who did not buy Paul's claims were called Unitarians. The word Christianity was not there yet. Rabbi Paul did not try Jews to convert to his faith, rather as all efforts were to lure non-Jews wrongly called Gentiles which in Hebrew means bastard. Paul made his religion very delicious by saying Jesus paid for all your sins so feel free to commit these sins thus nullifying all the teachings of Jesus and all other true prophets whose main purpose was to cleanse the society of crimes, sins, injustices, exploitation, oppression and suppression of common people. Paul also promoted the idea that kings and rulers are from God so don't oppose them thus cementing king-clergy bond to exploits common people. On the other hand Paul gave clergy's blackmailing power. After knowing the sins and crimes of common people the clergy were able to exploit the sinners. He even allowed adoption of pagan practices such as making pictures and statues in the churches. This sweet religion later emerged as Christianity, in particular Trinity type of Christianity. It attracted a lot of followers as it had backing of both kings and the corrupt, self-serving immoral and unethical clergy. The Trinitarian Christians then started killing Unitarians who were actual true followers of Jesus. This topic is well covered by Ahmad Thompson in his book Blood on the Cross. Paul's letters comprise about half of New Testament and his teachings more than half of all teachings of present-day Christianity. His theories were ridiculous. Why the God, the King of Kings cannot forgive without sacrifice? Who can stop him doing so? In Islam for example there is no concept of unforgiven original sin. Adam and Eve made mistake but they felt ashamed and the most compassionate, the most merciful God forgave them when they repented. Every infant born is absolutely innocent and if a child dies he will go to paradise no matter in which religion he or she is born. Paul degrades the God all might when he preaches, God nurturing in a human's womb, being persecuted and being hanging on a cross. Why the God Almighty will inflict himself with such insults and misery? These theories do not make any sense at all and that's the reason many by name Christians do not believe in these and many revert to Islam that gives very logical and true answers to all these questions and remove all confusions and shows the straight path of success in both worlds. At Barnabas had described in his gospel that it was not Jesus who was crucified but rather the traitor disciple who took bribe from the enemies of Jesus and brought Roman soldiers to arrest Jesus. His face was transformed to look like Jesus. This also explains ridiculous behavior while carrying cross and hanging on cross. The God Almighty the Creator and Providers of all of the universe and whatever it contains and beyond not only protected and saved Jesus physically but also His message and life in the final divine. Book i.e., Quran. Quran is thus the absolutely authentic place where one can visit Jesus, His virgin mother who never married or dated anyone, His grandmother and other relatives. Quran is the living miracle as it is the only book in the world that is preserved and ever fresh in its original language over 1450 years. It's absolutely immune to the effects of time. It's dust and rust free, word by word from the God and no conflict with science because writer of Quran and science is one and the same. There are number two versions of Quran. You go to any country and any mosque you will find exactly the same Quran. For something to be accepted as authentic it must be in its original language word by word from the God in its original language. Translations can never be equal to original. Even one word in one paragraph could be translated in so many ways. Only in Quran fulfills this condition and therefore it makes a perfect sense that Quran is the final divine book who is also entirely memorized by heart by millions. If you want to read this the most amazing book that even led to laying down of foundations of all modern sciences and wonderful developments in all spheres of life please visit the following websites. References 1. Quran.com 2. Mercurin.live 3. 1001 Inventions by National Geographic 
4. The History of the Arabs by Phillips Hightai. 5. Muslim Heritage. Was Paul a saint? Are Christians today following Jesus? The answer sadly and clearly is big no. Are there priests preaching Jesus' teaching? Answer again is resounding no. So what are they following today? It's not exaggeration to say that they are following the doctrine of a person who according to Encyclopedia Britannica was the bitterest enemy of Jesus, who persecuted followers of Jesus. Paul who was a shrewd rabbi with original name of Saul played a drama after the God Almighty saved Jesus from crucifixion. He invented a paradoxical way of continuing his enmity to Jesus and misguiding common naive people. It was to kill Jesus' message and the rap of his personality worship. Almost all loyal disciples of Jesus recognized his malicious plan, however Barnabas fell in his trap and asked for his forgiveness and granting him a chance. Barnabas however, regretted on his blunder for his entire life. Jesus all his entire life remained a humble servant of the God Almighty, never claimed to be God or Son of God. He was miraculously born to Virgin Mary just like Adam was born without mother or father and Eve was created from rib of Adam. The God whose proper name in Arabic is Allah used by Muslims, Christians and Jews is not bound by his own laws. By his permission and orders various messengers were able to perform miracles like Abraham emerged from blazing fire unhurt, Moses split the river and Jesus raised the dead etc etc. So creation of Jesus was exceptional in his ability to talk at birth like an adult and to possess the knowledge of Torah and Injil, proper name of divine book given to Jesus. Jesus was a man eating, drinking, getting fatigued and sleeping, surely not virtues of the God. He was undoubtedly true messenger of the God. He was the most obedient servant of Allah. He said very clearly that after his departure the final messenger of the God i.e., Muhammad will come. Jews also knew about this and when Muhammad arrived many Christians and some Jews recognized him and accepted him. While many despite recognizing him did not accept due to their own vested interests and arrogance. Notable among those who reverted to Islam was the chief of Jews in Medina Abdullah Salam. While Jesus all his life advocated worship of one and only God and shunning all sins and if he she makes a mistake, one should immediately repent to the God directly without any intermediary. Paul on contrary allowed all sins making a hilarious excuse that Jesus had paid for all your sins, thus effectively killing Jesus' message and making Jesus a God, an unforgivable sin. If a person dies in that condition. He also cleverly empowered priests to blackmail people by knowing their crimes and sins through confessions. As a result Paul's religion which had nothing to do with Jesus' teaching except that it was diagonally opposite to Jesus' religion. Became too sweet and too acceptable allowing even pictures and statues in the churches, an obvious pagan contamination. Early Christians were thus divided into two big categories, Unitarian versus Trinitarian Christians. As Paul's religion was too sweet and too good it rapidly spread like a wildfire while Unitarian Christians shrunk and even eliminated by sword. According to Ahmad Thompson's book Blood on the Cross thousands followers of Unitarian Christianity were put to death. Bosnian Christians were Unitarian and had always troubles with Croatian and Serbian Trinitarian Christians. When first time exposed to Quran they reverted to Islam and large numbers as clear signs for coming of Muhammad were given, Gospel of Barnabas which they were following. Of course Paul's followers had totally banned the Gospel of Barnabas. Death penalty was assigned on possession of this book as it would take out all the air from the Pauline balloon. Rabbi Paul's religion makes Christians to blindly support Zionists despite all their state and individual terrorism. The time for return of Jesus seems quite near now. As Allah drowned arrogant Pharaoh at the hands of a son of Bani Israel whose sons were slaughtered by him day and night, Allah will punish by same Jesus whom they tried to crucify but failed. In summary, Pauline religion is diagonally opposite to Jesus' religion. Theocracy is happy with Pauline religion as it provides them with wealth and power. The Zionists are happy too as Pauline religion makes Christians to blindly support them. While the fact is that the messenger whom Jesus promised had come about 1450 years ago i.e., Muhammad the final true messenger of Allah recognized and accepted by many Christians and some Jews. Was given the final divine book Quran. Quran is the best book giving explicit true and accurate account of Jesus and his virgin mother's lives and message. It's the most precious and most beneficial gift from the God to the mankind. Choice not between right or left, choice between right or wrong. It's not the question of right or left, it's the question of right or wrong. 
Who decides what's right or wrong, of course our Creator and the one who cares the most. None other than the God, one and only. Where I can find His authentic guide. Authentic guide requires instructions in original unchangeable ever fresh language as translations can never be equal to original. And that the miraculous book is only and only Quran, its language over 1450 years same and as fresh as on day one. It was given to the final prophet and messenger Muhammad who is mentioned in Torah and in teachings of Jesus. Quran has the power to solve all your personal problems as well as that of USA and the world. It was Quran that pulled West out of dark ages and paved the foundation of all modern sciences through producing most amazing giants among men and women who gave us all things from zero, Arabic. Numerals, to petrol, concrete roads to astronomy, soaps to delicious coffee and zillions more. Choice is not between donkey and elephant, choice is between right and wrong. Serious comments and questions most welcome. Fulfillment of prayers of Mary's mother regarding Mary and Jesus, peace be upon them. Jesus was born from Virgin Mary. This was miracle to relieve Mary's serving husband and child who was so cute and intelligent at birth that he spoke at birth as prophet and intelligent person. This was the fulfillment of the prayer which Mary's mother made when Mary was in her womb. Third part of prayer will be fulfilled when Jesus comes back and get married and have children as third part of prayers relate to progeny of Jesus. There is a beautiful surah, chapter, titled Maryam, Mary, in Quran. Quran is the best place to know Jesus, his mother, his grandmother and maternal uncles. Unfortunately Christians today are following Rabbi Paul who is now known as Saint Paul. According to Encyclopedia Britannica Paul was the bitterest enemy of Jesus. After departure of Jesus Paul invented a satanic clever way to destroy Jesus' teachings and path by inventing his personality worship. Pauline Christianity, the prophet's access to the Bible, and similarities in the Gospels. Answer by us that Aliate. Question, Assalamu alaikum. My wife is a Christian and she is currently exploring both Islam and Christianity. She asked how is it possible for Paul to write that well, obviously with some flaws in the Bible, after our prophet Isaiah, Jesus' peace and blessing be upon him, departure many hundred years later? I know he cooperated with King Constantine and gave into his demand for one Bible. Are his eleven apostles right and correctly written in the Bible? Are David's Psalms correct? Second, did Rasulullah, Saws, peace and blessing be upon him, have access to a Bible in any way? Third, how come Matthew, Mark and others are so similar? Fourth, was Paul really inspired by Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, to jot down all his statements in the Bible? How did he come to know so much of what to say in the Bible? Answer, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you are well inshallah. You have raised many important issues and questions that deserve a lot of research and reflection. Here are a few quick answers. I hope you follow up and investigate further. Paul and our Master Jesus, peace be upon him. First of all, Paul did not live many hundred years after our Master Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. He was his contemporary but the two men never actually met each other during their historical lives. Paul did not meet Constantine as the latter lived three centuries later, and Constantine did not have anything to do with codifying the biblical text. He was mainly concerned with Christology, that is, the nature and function of Jesus Christ, was he equal, homoousian in Greek, with the Father or not. This was why he convened the infamous Council of Nicaea in 325 CE. You noted that Isaiah is another name for Jesus. This is incorrect. The Hebrew prophet Isaiah, d. 7th century BCE, is not mentioned in any definitive Muslim proof text as far as I know. Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, is ISA in the Quranic text or Yeshua in Syriac, meaning saved by God, see Psalm 20 verse 6. According to the book of Acts as well as Paul's own account in his various epistles canonized in the New Testament, Paul encountered a vision of the resurrected Christ on the road to Damascus a short time after the ascension of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, in which Christ commissioned Paul to admonish the Gentiles and build believing Christian congregations, Acts 9, 22, 26, Gal 1-2. Paul does not represent ISA, peace be upon him. However, according to renowned biblical scholars philosophers F. C. Bauer, Walter Bauer, and Soren Kierkegaard, and others, even Thomas Jefferson, Paul is the initial corrupter of the rigidly monotheistic gospel of the holy prophet Jesus Christ, peace and blessing be upon him. 
Paul fails to accurately quote Jesus even one time in his 14 letters and epistles, actually 7, Romans, Galatians, Philippians, 1 and 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, Philemon. The other seven are viewed by the vast majority of New Testament scholars to be pseudonymous forgeries attributed to Paul by Pauline elements. By his own admission, Paul has fundamental differences of opinion with the Jerusalem apostolic leadership, namely James the Just. The brother of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, and his successor, see the book of Galatians. Paul accuses Peter, James, and Barnabas of hypocrisy and condemns these eminent apostles as adhering to another gospel, Epsilon Tau Epsilon Rho Omicron Nu Epsilon Upsilon Alpha Gamma Gamma Epsilon Land Iota Omicron Nu, Galatians 1 verse 6. Paul also admits that he does not possess a letter of recommendation, Ijaza, from any authoritative apostle licensing him to teach the gospel, 2 COR. 3 colon 1. Pauline Christianity is today's Christianity. Paul's influence has led many scholars to conclude that he is the actual principal founder of the religion of Christianity. Various dogmas such as vicarious atonement, incarnation, and divine sonship find clear origin in the Pauline corpus of the New Testament. The early believing community was split between Jamsonian Christianity, centered in Jerusalem and Semitic, Ebionite, in its theological orientation and Pauline Christianity. Centered on Paul and his missions and Proto-Trinitarian in its theological, Christological, orientation. The only two books of the New Testament that reflect the Jamsonian school are the books of James and Jude, both family members of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. Epistle of Straw by staunchly pro-Pauline theologian and spearhead of the Protestant Reformation Martin Luther, d. 1546 CE. There are several other writings that reflect the Jamsonian school of theology that did not make it into the New Testament due to their so-called heretical stances, the Clementine literature. The Didache, Liturgy of St. James, Gospel of the Ebionites, Gospel of the Hebrews, etc. The Other Apostles and the Psalms. There are also other books in the New Testament, and t, that claim to have been written by apostles of Jesus, Matthew, John, and Peter. But almost all NT scholars believe that these books are pseudonymous as well. The practice of pseudonymity, or pious fraud deception, was quite common in the Greco-Roman world at the time. With respect to the Psalms, the scholars of Islam say that indeed there are elements of truth in them. But even Old Testament biblical scholars of higher criticism do not maintain that the actual King David, peace and blessing be upon him, wrote the slams and have almost universally labeled the book. Anonymous. Did our master Muhammad, peace and blessing of be upon him, have access to a Bible? It is certainly conceivable that he did have access to a Bible, but we should remember that the Bible wasn't actually translated into Arabic until the 8th century CE. That means, as some Orientalists have actually maintained, that he listened to stories about Abraham, Moses, Jesus, etc., that were translated to him by learned Jews and Christians, and was then able to rehash those stories back into Arabic, in a style and beauty that remains unmatched to this day. The question then becomes, who are his human teachers that gave him these insights? The hypocrisy of the Western Orientalist becomes apparent here due to the fact that when it comes to Jesus, who certainly had access to the Old Testament, OT in his own language, he employs a hermeneutic of acceptance, that is to say, that Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, was prima facie honest and truthful. But when it comes to Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, he employs a hermeneutic of suspicion, that is to say, the prophet must have had an ulterior motive. There were no Christian nor Jewish tribes living in Mecca at that time, only certain individuals. Warakabi, Nafal died in the prophet's second ministerial year. It is inconceivable that an unlettered Arab would have such specialized religious information at that time and place unless he was divinely inspired or raised as a student and rigorously trained in some seminary of some sort, such as a monastery or yeshiva. With this said, the Prophet was dubbed al-Sadiq al-Amin by his people even before his prophecy. Similarities between Matthew, Mark, and Luke These Gospels are similar because Matthew and Luke simply used Mark's skeleton in the writing of their respective Gospels. This is why these three Gospels are called synoptic, meaning one-eyed. Mark wrote around 70 CE, Matthew around 85 CE, and Luke around 85 to 90 CE. This theory, known as the two-source theory, is the most widely held opinion by biblical scholars. 
However, at times Matthew and Luke will revise a Markan story or pericope due to linguistic or theological reasons. The work of the great German scholars of the 18th and 19th centuries such as Boltmann and Strauss gave rise to the study of higher biblical criticism and includes redaction, source, and textual criticisms. See misquoting Jesus by Bart Ehrman for some incredible insights and information. John's Gospel is vastly different than the synoptic tradition and scholars have different theories as to why that is. Aliyah